the beginning, the heart of a locomotive was a roaring fire, harnessed for steam power. An engine was nothing but a furnace on wheels, and the fireman had to bail in a lot of coal to keep the old girl hot. Each advance in steam engine design produced more power out of the essential fire. has packed the old railroad flames into a fuel injection flash. And the introduction of electricity put the power in overhead wires. Yes, the electrics and diesels are taking over. is a die-hard. It doesn't like being put off the railroad, and it has a way of coming back. Got a fire alarm, Bill. What's the story behind fires like this? Gentlemen, I have here the photograph on, of the fire on 5715A. That's the one that was on fire up near View last week, isn't it, Bill? That's right, Dick. I also have the engineman's statement on the fire on this locomotive. I attempted to use the CO2 extinguisher, but the smoke was too thick. I did not operate the CO2 valve to the high voltage cabinet. Gentlemen, here it is again. On this particular locomotive, there is a CO2 nozzle built right into the high voltage cabinet. But apparently in this fire, he did not know where it was. Well, what you say, Bill, is borne out by some of the units we've taken into the shop with fire damage. A few of them haven't had the fire extinguishing system used at all and others have had the dry powder used where the CO2 would have done a better job. We have endeavored to instruct the crews thoroughly, but some of these engine crews have worked on diesel locomotives for a number of years without any actual experience with a fire. And when a fire does occur, sometimes they do not do the right thing at the right time. I believe this all boils down to three things that we're going to have to get across to our engine crews. First, the kind of fires that are likely to occur. Second, the equipment that is available for their use. And third, the methods which should be employed to put those fires out fast. Well, the means to go after a traction motor fire is quite different from the method of going after a, a cabinet fire. Oh, that's true. I think we would all be satisfied that we could keep these little fires from becoming big ones. It's that simple. And there's no reason why we can't lick this thing. No, there's no reason. Not when you know what causes fires and where they break out. The reports tell the story. The trouble spots are arcs or brake shoe sparks igniting oil. 
stump fires in engines. Generators, shorted or overloaded circuits. Loose traction motor leads, creating high resistance. Preventive coil, transformer, and switch group areas on electrics. Those are the main trouble spots. Yet we have plenty of mechanical troubleshooters. First, we have detector devices. And in each cab, alarms. Second, carbon dioxide and dry powder to fight fires. CO2 is ideal for the kind of fires we get. It will not damage the most sensitive railroad equipment. It has a high expansion ratio and penetrates every nook and corner. CO2, which you know in its solid state as dry ice, smothers fire by depriving it of oxygen. And third, we have specially designed pipe systems created to combat specific locomotive fires. Here's a typical installation found only on our road diesels. There are four 50-pound CO2 cylinders. They're coupled in pairs. When turned on, each pair provides 100 pounds of CO2. Four hose stations, each with 50 feet of hose and squeeze grip valve discharge horns. At each station, a direction valve must be opened to allow CO2 to pass through. Cylinders and hose stations are connected by a fixed pipe system. Each unit has eight remote control pull boxes. Four inside, four outside. All pull boxes are connected to the cylinders with cables so that there are two outside and two inside pull boxes for each pair of cylinders. When a fire occurs, a Fenwall thermostat trips the fire gong and light in the cab. After the train is stopped and the emergency fuel cutoff has been pulled, the fireman pulls any inside pull box. This releases CO2 from one pair of cylinders up to the directional valves at each hose station. He then selects the hose station most convenient to the fire area, throws the directional valve in a counterclockwise direction. This fills the hose with CO2 up to the squeeze grip control on the horn assembly. Then the horn can be carried to the fire, where by squeezing the grip control, CO2 is discharged. Now, what happens if you exhaust your first two cylinders and you need more CO2? In that case, you pull any of the four remaining. And when in doubt about which one, pull them all. If things really get hot and you exhaust your CO2 in the first unit, you can get more by doing two things. One, pull at least two pull boxes in the next unit. Use your third and fourth unit supply if needed. Two, throw the return flow valve here. CO2 will flow through the flexible connector to the horn already used in combating the fire. If a fire occurs in the electric cabinet, on most units we have built-in CO2 discharge nozzles. Pull any pull box near the cabinet, then throw the directional valve counterclockwise. This discharges CO2 inside the cabinet. That means you keep the cabinet doors shut. In addition to the pipe systems, two portable dry powder extinguishers are provided. One in the cab, one in the engine room on these diesels. All of our switchers have two or three 20-pound CO2 portable extinguishers. In the cab, and under the engine hood on the fireman's side. On electric equipment, two 15-pound portables are provided. P5s are being equipped with a pipe system, which will release CO2 in the transformer, preventive coil, and switch group area. Yet with all this firefighting equipment, CO2, 
dry powder portables, elaborate pipe systems. We're still having expensive losses, like this. Why? Because the best firefighting apparatus is useless if not used properly. It might just as well not be there. What then should be done when fire strikes? Just watch. charger on this engine. Okay, pull emergency fuel trip after we stop, see what you can do. I'll come back and give you a hand. Engine 5755, train 32, calling view. View, we have a fire in the engine room. Call the Duncannon Fire Department. We're stopping at Aqueduct Road Crossing. We got a fire in the engine room. I'll let you know in a few minutes how long it'll be. Have you got a fog nozzle? You bet. We're all set. Never mind, boys. She's all out. Fire's all out. We'll be ready to leave in a minute, but we'll only have two units working. Okay. should be attacked. It was small, and it stayed that way. Road delay, slight. Physical damage, negligible. Financial loss, none. Why? Because these men knew how to use their equipment and worked fast. The specific steps they took should be remembered. Detect fire as soon as possible. Use the train phone to report and get help, even though it might not be needed. If possible, stop at road crossings, overpasses, or underpasses where the civil fire department can help you. Pull the emergency fuel cutoff. Prepare the CO2 system for action by first opening the pull box and pulling the handle hard as far as it'll go. Second, throw valve handle to the left at the hose station to be used. Third, run the hose and discharge horn to the fire. Since each pair of cylinders lasts only about a minute, don't squeeze the handle until you're ready to put out the fire. Those steps will apply to a lot of fires, but there are some general things to keep in mind in other situations. If the fire occurs in an electrical cabinet which has a built-in CO2 nozzle, all that has to be done is pull the handle in the pull box. Then open the valve located near the cabinet. CO2 will be released inside. Keep the cabinet doors closed. If you've exhausted all the CO2 in your first unit, go to the second, pull at least two boxes, and turn the connecting valve counterclockwise.
On BH-50s, you only have to pull a pull box. The two units are automatically interconnected. Proper use of portable extinguisher means removing extinguisher from bracket by carrying handle, carry to the point of the fire. Remove operating locking pin and squeeze the grip valve handle on discharge horn. Direct the stream at the base of the fire. Continue to spray the burned area after the flames are extinguished to prevent flare-ups. For fires in the trucks or in rare instances of collision with an automobile where gasoline may have been sprayed on the unit, the portable dry powder extinguishers should be used. As a rule, use the dry powders on the outside, the CO2 inside, but use everything you've got outside or inside to get the fire out. extinguishing instruction cards have been placed in the cabs of our locomotives. They are the key to fire control. Don't wait till you have a fire to read it. Whenever fire extinguishers are used, it must be reported on your work report. This protects the next man from being caught with empty extinguishers. The means to reduce road delays, physical damage, financial loss, and personal injuries are provided on your locomotives. It's up to you whether your engine lines up like this or keeps rolling like this. It's up to you to know what in blazes goes on.